Hey, welcome to Cow Free Kicks. On this channel, I review leather free sneakers only, and this video is all about an absolutely amazing drop from Mizuno. It is the Shinzo Paris and Mizuno Contender Baseball Pack Blue Rats. Welcome to the channel. If you've not seen one of my videos before, I always look into five different categories when I review a pair of sneakers. And then at the end of the video, I will give these Shinzo Paris Mizuno Contender Baseball Pack Blue Rats an overall rating out of five stars. As always, if you do like what you see as you're going along, please do not forget to click the little thumbs up like button below on your device. And if you've not done so already, please do take time to subscribe to the channel. So let's start this review off as we always do by first checking out these Mizuno Contenders on feet. If you're not aware at all about this release, then this sneaker is very unique, and that's why I absolutely love the way that they look. Now, it currently comes in two different colorways via the Shinzo Paris website or in-store. It comes in the blue rat colorway and the red rat colorway. I personally prefer this royal blue. I always have, especially on the Air Max ones, but I think it hits this contender really well with these hits of like this kind of off-white beige, and then there's also a slightly different tonal gray to the upper of the sneaker as well. Now, if you've seen just over my right shoulder, you've noticed that the shoe on the box looks incredibly different to this pair of shoes in hand. And that's because this is a very unique shoe and I absolutely love what they've done with the sneaker. This is the second collaboration that Shinzo have done with Mizuno and they've done the same with both. It's a tear away upper sneaker. So what you've got on this shoe is you've got this corduroy finish to the whole upper of the sneaker with the baseball heritage and the Japanese styling that is almost just a little bit evident just here with this red stitching that you get in the middle of the foot just at the end of the toe box that replicates that of a baseball but really the Japanese and baseball heritage from the Mizuno brand really hits home when you start to rip the upper layer of this shoe off. Now Mizuno have kindly included inside the sneaker box this plan here. Now you can see the areas in red are the only areas on the shoe that actually need to stay the same. So the only areas that you cannot tear off. They've actually included stitching diagrams to show you where the stitching for the upper is so you don't cut into them. The rest of the upper of this sneaker can be completely cut off and I'll show you how. So this is what you get if you cut away some of those layers of that corduroy upper. You can see here that there's like a heritage style Japanese baseball inspired comic strip that lays underneath the corduroy upper. Now you can let this upper wear away with time and just naturally erode and fall off. But for me, this sneaker really comes to life. If you see the inside of the shoe, I've not cut that away because I just didn't have the time. But the outside of the sneaker can be tailored to exactly how much comic strip you want to show off because there's still areas of this sneaker that I have not cut away to expose the comic strip. Just here, for example, there's a double layer of corduroy on the rear heel cup of the sneaker. So you cut the blue away. There's another color of the gray just 
it's there, you can cut that away to expose more comic strip, or you can keep that as it is and have a bit more of the corduroy gray. You can do more towards the toe box. This area here can also be exposed. You can expose the full area around the lace loops as well. So really all you're left with is the stitching in between and this royal blue that you get here with the Mizuno branding and the royal blue of the toe box as well. But you can see when you cut it all away, the tongue is incredibly exposed. You get full comic strip really with the fact that you've got it on the toe box and the tongue that's very exposed. And I really, really like the touch that Mizuno have added towards the top of the tongue, which is this Mizuno embroidered branding, which you can uncover by cutting away this corduroy. Now for me, this sneaker is best when it's cut away, when it's not cut away and you have the version that's above my shoulder on the right. The areas that do have the corduroy that you can cut away, there's almost like a little plastic bag-like feel underneath it because as well as the corduroy, there is a small plastic layer, the film that pulls off as well. So if you don't take this off when you're walking around, there is a slight scrunchy feeling on the foot and you can also hear it as well. But when it's cut off, I just think it looks absolutely incredible. I love this type of sneaker. I love the fact that it's got secret images underneath and you can choose to cut away or expose as much as you want. I will continue to probably fully expose this sneaker when I've got more time, but just based on the time limits I had, I couldn't do the inside of the shoe. And also there were other areas like around the laces and also further around the toe box and the heel that I'll definitely try and cut away later. But overall looks wise, I just think they're so different. They're so unique. I love the way that they look in hand and on feet. I really love the Mizuno Contender foam midsole unit you get with the bobbles here and this cutaway. The outsole of the sneaker continues with the royal blue theme on this colorway and you've got some more black there with almost waffle cutaways and then some more strokes just there. It just looks so good in hand and on feet. I absolutely love I love the design behind it. I love the way it looks. Overall, for me, it's full five stars in the looks department. Now I want to talk more about their comfort, where I want to put this foam midsole to the test on my back doorstep. Sorry, I fully dragged out the first part of the video there. So I'll speed through the comfort and the weight and the breathability sections. I've referred back to the original silhouette for this part of the video because I just want to show you what everything will look like if you decide to let it wear away with time and not be more aggressive like I have and cut it away when you first get it. So comfort wise, this unnamed foam midsole unit that you get with these Mizuno Shinzo Paris contenders is a little on the firmer side. It's pretty much a traditional 90s, 2000s foam midsole unit that you'd expect to find on a retro pair of sneakers like these a little bit firm but has a nice amount of soft cushioning and bounce I really really do like the way that these feel underfoot I like the fact that they're a little bit firmer the step test doesn't give too much away but under feet they do feel a little bit more bouncy and on top of your feet you've got that classic 90s styling with the fact that you've got a really really nice foam uh, tongue just on the top here and you've got really nice foam around the heel unit as well and the foam continues on the inside of the sneaker too Fit wise, they're an absolute true fit. So don't worry about going half a size up or half a size down. And sizing is key with these. So do make sure that you go true to size. They did feel a little bit tight. So if you've got slightly wider than average feet like me, you might wanna go half a size up and do get that size right before you start cutting them away. Cause obviously you can't return them past that point. Length wise, they're a perfect UK size 10 for me. So no issues with the length, but width wise, I do have slightly wider than average feet and the toe box does have a little bit of nip to it. But for me, I really like like the fact that they feel a little bit tighter. I don't mind the firm ride either. I just think the overall comfort for these is really, really nice. Now I wanna move on to their weight where I wanna put them on the scales. Tipping the scales at 337 grams, that's a really nice weight for these shoes. I have weighed them with the full corduroy upper in place. Obviously they're only gonna get lighter if you decide to cut that away. And I do think that any shoe around the 350 gram mark and below can be considered a lightweight sneaker. So these do fall into that category. And I do think the 337 grams is a really nice weight because for me, weight affects comfort and the lighter the shoe, the more comfortable I think they feel on feet. Overall, I think that they probably could drop about another five grams if you do do the full cutaway. I haven't actually weighed the sneaker behind me, but I'm guessing that obviously they're only gonna get lighter. Now I wanna move on to their breathability, where again, I've kept it in its full state and I'm gonna pump this upper full of smoke to see how breathable it is.
So I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but underneath this full corduroy upper, the exposed material is actually a thicker canvas material. So I did do the smoke test with all of the corduroy and canvas intact. I was gonna do it where it was all cut away, but to be honest, I don't think that's gonna change the result at all. They're incredibly dense. Obviously you've got the corduroy fabric on top for the smoke test that I did. And underneath that, you've got a very dense canvas material. There's no perforations anywhere in the upper of this sneaker. So you're not gonna get any breathability with these at all, unfortunately. And this is really where this shoe does fall down. And it is with breathability, especially moving towards the spring and summer months in this part of the world. I do think that they are gonna make your feet a little bit hot and sweaty when you do wear them out and about. Now, now I want to move on to their price. Now these set me back 130 euros and there also was a 30 euro packing and postage charge on top. So I think overall with conversion rates, it came to around 150 pounds. It's a little bit on the pricey side, I guess, if you are trying to find a pair of sneakers but I don't think it's too bad a price if you're buying them at their standard price of 130 euros. Obviously, I think these are also only available in the EU, so if I do think you're gonna buy them in any part of the world and get them transferred, you are gonna be hit with big shipping costs again. But I think the standard price of 130 euros is actually quite fair for a sneaker that you can fully customize to however you want by exposing the Japanese heritage comic strip underneath. And I just think overall, they just look so good in hand and on feet, and I love the concept of them, that I think it's a pretty fair price. And that's gonna bring me on to my overall score for these sneakers. Now these are gonna get a very heavily weighted looks five stars. They do really let themselves down with the breathability. And that is possibly something that I should have taken into more consideration. But I just think the whole concept of the sneaker, the way they look, the way they feel on feet, I love their comfort. I love the fact that they come in at a lightweight. And I do think the price is pretty fair as well. I think five stars is a very fair rating because I just think they're so different. You don't get sneakers that come along like this very often that you can fully customize. And it was a lot of fun cutting that away. It did take me around 15 minutes to even get to that point. So it's a little bit of a project, something to do to cut these away to how you like it. You could even keep one shoe full and cut the other shoe away, however you wanted to do it. I just think having that ability to customize these and as well, what you expose underneath and the heritage you mean behind them, I just think it's great. So overall five stars, I think is a pretty fair score, but I've definitely bumped it up because of the way they look so if you like what you've seen please do not forget to give the video a big thumbs up before you leave you can also follow me on instagram drop in comments below and hopefully i'll see you again soon bye